This is Paul Natone, and I've been flying hand launching F3K gliders for about 30 years, and I'm really excited to see the new F5K electric launch class take off. In this video series, I'm going to cover some of the gear and building details of the new Vortex 3 Electro, a state of the art 1.5 meter electric launch glider designed for competitions and for sport and travel slope and thermal flying. Let's get to it. So here's the left panel of the Vortex 3 Electro. It's a spread toe surface top and bottom with a foam core, so the wing is very dent resistant and very strong. Now you might be thinking, oh, I can put a throwing peg in the tip here and use this as a DLG wing or just throw the electric. Well, you don't want to do that because to save weight in the electric versions, the spar system isn't as strong. So if you put a throwing peg in, um, you know, the wing could be compromised. So you don't want to do that. It's got this really nicely done high visibility circuit board paint job on the top. And then on the bottom, we have visibility stripes. And the main difference between the F3K version and the Electro version is that the servo is going to be mounted for the flaperons in the wing and not in the front of the fuse like the F3K version. Let's take a look at the joiner system. The design of the two-piece wing is pretty clever. There are two tabs on this on the left panel that go into matching tabs on the right panel. And then the joiner, which ties the two spars together, the joiner is actually glued into the wing, which is a nice feature because you won't drive away to go flying and leave the joiner behind or lose it at the flying field. So that's pretty cool. So let's plug it into the other side. All you need to do is slide the two pieces together, push them together. You don't need tape. Two bolts hold it to the fuselage. So here's the fuse. It's all spread toe. The nose is pre-cut for you. It just has a standard hatch system in the front. We'll be putting spring clips on that. And there's some standard cloth uh, carbon on the inside in the front of the fuselage here. There's our two hard points for our wing hold down. And there is some room back here, so I may be cutting the base out between the two hard points to maybe fit a larger battery. Maybe the receiver's going to go back here. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to do a CG test and test that out. The boom's all spread toe, of course. And going back to the stab, it's a standard F3K style stab on a pylon, two hard points here. And we're going to be putting a spring pull system on the elevator and the rudder as well. Now these booms, again, are lighter in the electric version, so don't DLG launch uh, this particular boom because it will not handle the side loads. Since we're not sidearm launching this plane, we don't need a rudder fin with a big sub rudder fin. And this just has a standard vertical tail like you'd find on any thermal airplane. You just slide it on the back of the boom here, line it up. We'll put a paint mark in there later for that. And just a piece of tape holds it on. And then you just attach the cable for the spring pull to the rudder blade and for the elevator and you're ready to fly. So the rudder comes right off. The stab on bolts comes right off. So this plane breaks down into a really small package. Now for this project, I'm using the MKS. These are the newer HV75Ks. I have these servos in all my hand launches. They're brilliant. They're bulletproof. Yeah, they're a little bit more expensive, but man, they're totally worth it because they don't fail. And um, the new HVs allow you to run the motor pack, which are most for F5Ks is 2S. You can run the 2S directly into your receivers and power the servos directly without having to use um, either a voltage regulator or an SPEC. So, that's what I'm using here. So here's the motor setup I'm going to be using for this glider. This is an outrunner motor because there's just no reason to use a heavy inrunner in a gearbox in these airplanes. They're just too light and they'll come out nose heavy. This is a Steve New outrunner motor that I'm testing out. In fact, this one came out of his personal test airplane too. Uh, gave this to me to test uh, for this video series. Now you see the aluminum part here. We're playing around with this too. This extends the shaft of the motor and then uh, bolts into the firewall. Get it in focus here. Bolts into the firewall and uh, there's a bearing up here too. So what this allows you to do is you can get the motor further back in the fuse for CG issues. Plus it'll give you more clearance because remember there's motor wires on an outrunner that you, know, you don't want the uh, motor can as it rotates to chafe these wires as well. So this should be a pretty interesting setup. And for an ESC, we've got the good tried and true, the Talon 15, uh, 15 Amper from Castle. I have the programming cards and the software for this, and I'm pretty familiar with these um, ESCs as well. And it does have a pretty big, I think it's a 3-amp SBC in it, 
two. So if you don't have high voltage servos, you can just run your flight pack directly into it and then run your receiver and servos right off the ESC. So that's pretty cool. So should be interesting getting this in the airplane. So for a spinner, I'm using the CN spinner setup with their props as well. Set up for a three millimeter shaft. You can see it's got the offsets here, so it folds cleanly to the fuselage. And it just has a collet to tighten it on the shaft. And for blades, I'm gonna try a 7.4 to start with. I may try a 6.3 or a 6.5 for something like that. Because remember with these planes, you really want dash speed. You don't need climb torque. You wanna to be able to range out flat and go really fast. I'm going to be trying out a few packs in this airplane. These are Dynogy packs from Soaring USA. We've got a 550-65C and a 300-65C pack. Look how small these things are. And if you had, you know, these are inexpensive. You can have five or six of these in your flight bag and you could fly all day and not have to recharge. Vortex comes with a nice little hardware package. Actually has the cables for the pull spring system and all the horns for the rudder elevator and flaperons, extra bolts. It also comes with the uh, torsion springs too, which is really nice. These are pre-cut and set up so you don't have to do trial and error to get the right spring tension too. That's a really nice touch. And it comes with a 3D printed servo tray as well. I did order the optional ballast kit, which is a series of stainless steel pre-bent wires and a whole bunch of 10 gram weights which slide on those wires. I'm not quite sure how these we're going to install yet, but they basically clip into the front of the fuse. You slide them down the fuse underneath the wing and then clip it in to the servo tray area and then you can adjust your wing loading from that. We'll get more into the ballast later. For a receiver, I'm going to be using the new Spectrum. This is the AR6610T with full telemetry. And, but I am going to strip the case off of it. I think this is only seven grams or so uh, without the case. You know, it'll run at various voltages. and also has the extended carbon antennas, which are going to be very useful because this is a fully carbon airplane. I think I'll be running the antennas out towards the back of the wing or back of the fuse because I think I'm going to have the receiver uh, mounted under the wing or further back. Since I am building this plane for contest flying, I need to find room for this. This is the Aerobtech Altus Micro, and this is the device which controls your motor time and motor cutoff. And I think as of December 21, um, this is the only device really approved for F5K contests. I do need to do a firmware and software update on this device here so it's fully F5K compatible and then can communicate with the Aerobtech uh, device terminal or the keypad plus. Okay, so let's weigh some of the parts. Here's our hardware package with our spring cables and horns at 1.5 grams. Oh, let's just add the servo tray on there. So we've got 4.3 for that. Our receiver without case, 8.1. MKS HV 75, it's 7.9 times four, and that's with the plastic horns on there would probably be a little bit lighter than that. Here's our 552S pack, 26.4. Here's our 300 pack, 18.1. Spinner and prop, 8.5. Here's our motor and ESC all wired up, 32 grams. There's a little bit of servo wire. We'll probably be lighter than that, but 4.7. So here's the stab, rudder blade, and two mounting screws at 12.4. And here's the raw fuse, 36.5. So here's the left wing, 50.4. It's probably gonna be a little heavier because of the spar and the connection. Here's the right panel. 51.8, wow, pretty nice match there. So when putting together any electric sailplane, it's really important before you start the build to know where your CG is gonna end up. Especially on a light airplane like this, we don't wanna have to add a tail weight or add nose weight to get the CG within the CG range limits here. I have the Vortex on my uh, glider CG, CG calculation machine. This is actually one of the handiest tools in my shop I've gotten in the last couple of years and I use this thing a lot. 
So we have some fixed items, like the servos here, that are fixed location. But my receiver, I can move the receiver around a little bit. And the battery pack, which is you know, the densest object on the airplane, that's really going to determine where the CG may end up. Because the motor's fixed, I have a little bit of wiggle room for the servos for the elevator and rudder. I can move those you know, forward and back a little bit, but the battery's going to be kind of my main CG adjuster. So I have two marks on the wing. This is the 50% cord mark at 70 millimeters. Most of my DLGs fly at the CG at 50% cord. This forward line is at 65 millimeters, and this is one of the aft recommended CG locations for this particular wing. So I want my CG on the airplane as I do this mock-up to land at least at the 65, but probably between these two marks here is where, you know, I want my CG for the build. And I'll be using the battery. This is my most dense object, and I'll just slide the battery forward and aft and kind of see where my CG ends up. So with the battery pretty far back, almost over that middle line, um, it's showing my overall weight at 262 grams, which is a good target weight. There's definitely some missing items, some horns and glue and a little bit of wire. So our weight's going to be a little bit over that, but we're pretty much right on target. And the CG is at 70.5, so that means it's right at that neutral line, maybe a little bit behind. So I think the battery's too far back. So I'm going to slowly start moving the battery forward, and you'll see the CG change. There's 68. So now the front of the battery is about an inch behind. Just, it's just forward of the leading edge of the wing now. So there's 67. Maybe I want it back a little bit. 68. Let's go forward again. So there's 64 with the battery, the front of the battery right at the edge of the cockpit opening. So there's 65. So that'd be a good starting point for my first test flights. So. 262 weight, CG at 65.4 to start.